I'd never pictured making films the way we made Monsters when I was a kid. I always pictured movies with dolly shots, with jibs and quite specific kind of camera moves. Okay, let's give you the side of them. All filmmaking is fake. So what, as a filmmaker, what you're always striving to do is embed it in as much reality as possible. What is that? And with Monsters, you know, our goal was to create this world that felt very believable. And so with the digital technology becoming more and more powerful and in a sense more simple, you can approach a subject that is fantastic and shoot it in a way that it's all real, knowing that you can manipulate it in the computer to add all the elements you need. I've kind of learned to let random accidents come in to my work when I'm doing computer graphics and things. When things don't go your way, it can sometimes be a good thing because it gives a spin on everything that you were picturing and makes you then have to think of something brand new. And typically, the more that happens, the more different your final film will feel to the audience. We edited that film on Premiere and I did all the visual effects in After Effects. I think everybody that's ever made anything in digital cinema has used Photoshop. And so if you want to do them visual effects, it makes sense to use the tool that speaks perfectly to that, which is After Effects. And then if you're editing it, it makes sense to use the tool that speaks to all After Effects, which is Premiere. And so, so for me, they're the three most important tools that I use. We've compartmentalized filmmaking into these different separate things. But when you sit in the cinema, they're not separate at all. It's one big experience. And so the ultimate version of filmmaking, all those lines would be blurred. They wouldn't even exist. And so the ultimate software should blur those lines as well. It should be, it's all one and the same. It's all happening simultaneously. And that's why I'm always a big fan of Adobe in that it all interlinks. What I like about Adobe is I can create a shot within a like half an hour or an hour, I can track something, stick something very crude in and do the bad version of the shot. And suddenly that'll tell me a hundred things that I would never have predicted about where I need to put my efforts. And I feel like if I worked the normal way around, Monsters would have probably taken me four or five years to finish the effects on. It's like a little time machine. I can actually go into the future, see the final shot, then get in my DeLorean, go back in time, you know, and you can kind of see a crude version of your film. Okay, so you guys are gonna come up this one, right? When we did Monsters, we wanted the, the post-production process to be as fluid a process as possible. So we didn't want to deal with proxy files or low res files. We worked with the actual native, like full cinema resolution uh, footage. To be honest, we pushed the technology to its limits on that film. But what I'm really pleased about is that I've been opening the same projects in Premiere 5.5 and the editing is so much more fluid now. Everything plays back, you know, exactly how it should. The improvement is pretty astounding compared to CS4, what you get in 5 and 5.5 now. I kind of wish we'd had this version when we were cutting the film, it would have saved us months. So the whole bunch of things in the new version of After Effects in 5.5, it's all gone 64-bit, which is great because now it feels like you're only limited by the amount of RAM you've got in your computer, which is the way you want it. The ideal is you don't have any software, is you just imagine a film and it appears. I think that's CS7. <laughs> One of the great things about 5.5 is that it comes with warp stabilizer. What it essentially does is it takes handheld footage or footage that's just a bit wobbly or not as perfect as it should be. And through the magic of some math that I don't understand, you can press a button and it'll kind of stabilize the whole shot. But it's this sort of stuff that democratizes filmmaking. It means it's not like, oh, you have to have you know, 100,000 pounds in order to shoot anything. You can you can pick up a camera that costs next to nothing and, and still have it look like films that you're used to seeing that, that have way more resources than you'd ever have. I mean, it's quite frightening really how easy some of this stuff is because I'm a bit worried about the competition now. <laughs> it's like, I better hurry up and make my second film <laughs> before they realize it was just a button. <laughs> It's never been a better time, I think, to be an aspiring filmmaker in that 
you've got this amazing distribution company called The Internet that you can go off, you can make a short with all these tools and you can edit them on a computer and create whatever effects you want, stick it on the internet and tomorrow morning Hollywood can sit and watch it and they do. What's so reassuring about the state we're in at the moment is that, you know, even if Hollywood don't come and they don't call and you don't get that job, it doesn't matter because you have the tools to make a great film right now. You can go make a movie without Hollywood.